Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1971 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Cleveland Indians and the Seattle Pilots at Brainiac Stadium. On the mound for the Indians today is Sonny Siebert, whose record is 2-1 with a 2.10 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots is Dave Boswell, whose record is 2-1 with a 4.62 ERA. Okay, the Indians absolutely cleaned our clocks yesterday. It was our number five starter, John Gelnar, out there. Uh, I wish we had someone better in that number five spot in the rotation, uh, but we don't. Uh, we're just not ready to call up Dennis Leonard or Dick Ruthven from single A. I am considering moving, <coughs> excuse me, moving them from single A to triple A, uh, maybe after another couple of weeks, uh, we, keep in mind, we do not have a uh, double A. I'm talking, I might as well just show you. We do not have a double A franchise uh, affiliate uh, in the minor leagues. So it's either single A or triple A. And you can see we do not have a lot of players uh, in our uh, minor league system. So we're, you know, we're kind of uh, at an impasse here where we're not able to really bring anyone up that's going to help us. Now, uh, Herbal the Gerbil just came back off the um, IL yesterday. We added him back to the roster. In order to put him on the roster, we had to get rid of someone, and we did get rid of Ramon Hernandez. So Ron Locke will keep the left-handed spot, uh, take over for Ramon Hernandez. Keep in mind, uh, Ron Locke did not make the team out of spring training simply because he does not have a major league contract so he can go up and down uh, without penalty whereas uh, everybody else in our bullpen with the exception of Riddleberger are all on major league contracts so uh, we have two lefties we could send down and we have two lefty options we have nobody with a right-handed uh, pitching arm in uh, AAA so, yeah, this is what we're stuck with unless we can wheel and deal, and I don't think we really have any uh, more uh, tools to uh, try to trade. So that's just the way it goes. Now, uh, the other thing we did yesterday is we did give away uh, our first membership prize. That went to Freddie C. Congratulations to him. He got the 1981 Tops Mike Schmidt SGC graded 4. If you want to get in on future giveaways, it only costs you $1.99 for a monthly membership. And I am going to show you the prize we're going to give away next month. There it is. It is a, a Beckett Vintage Grading 1980 Tops Jim Palmer card. Graded a 6, excellent to mint. Uh, this is the 1980 uh, Jim Palmer card. You probably know him. Cyan Award winner, underwear model. Uh, great hair, and I believe he still calls some games for the Orioles. Uh, so this will be the prize that we're going to give away in the month of November. Let's call it November 15th. We'll give it away. That way you can have it before uh, the Thanksgiving season. So in order to win this card next month, you must be a member. Uh, you can click the Join button down below to get in on that. It's $1.99. Um, you may win, you may not, but that's your fee to enter. Freddie C is already in. He's our first and only member so far since we began this. And uh, you can get in on it. And if not, if, uh, if there's nobody else, you know what? I just put it in the mail to Freddie. Uh, so that's the prize that we are giving away. Okay, keep that in mind. Also, this is game 21. So in 19 more games, we're going to give away free prizes to our uh, subscribers so be a subscriber uh, hit the like button for me if you will and uh, when the time comes you can get in on the giveaway it'll probably be another 10 days before we start taking contestants for the duck race for the the next uh the first group of prizes okay we do have dave boswell on the mound he is technically our ace and you can see with our bullpen, Ray Peters will not be available. So it's good that we got Ron Herbal the gerbil back. He'll probably get into today's game. 
Our lineup versus Sonny Siebert, who's a right-hander, um, with a really good uh, uh, stat so far this year. I'm going with the all-defense lineup. Now, we do have to give Matty Sengi in the day off, despite him being on a seven-game hit streak. Uh, so we're going to get Dalrymple in there. He's a defensive upgrade. Aurelio Rodriguez is, is a defensive upgrade, although he committed a, an error yesterday. Uh, Belanger. I mean, these guys just cannot hit. That's the problem. We are really struggling with a multitude of our batters. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Cleveland Indians. It appears to be the same lineup as yesterday. Batting leadoff in right field is Russ Nagelson. Batting second in center field is Jose Cardinal. Batting third at second base is Billy Parker. Batting cleanup at first base is Norm Cash. Batting fifth in left field is John Lowenstein. Batting sixth at third base is Lou Camilli. Batting seventh in catching is Ken Suarez. Batting eighth at shortstop is Zoilo Versales. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Sonny Siebert. Let's take a look here at Dave Boswell making his fifth start of the year. 2-1 with a 4.62 ERA, 19 strikeouts, and 25 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 278 against him. He does have a complete game shutout already this year. Fastball topping out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is right around 54%, which is very high, uh, which is another re reason to have good defensive players in there, turning double plays and such. Uh, the slow curve is his out pitch rated in 89. That fastball is rated in 81. Overall rated in 84. He's only 26 years old. And the right-hander a free agent after the 1974 season. Take a look at his log. It's becoming one of those things where every other start is the good start. And so then he is due for a bad start today, coming off the victory against Minnesota. We'll see what he's got in store. Take a look at the defense. I mean, this is about as good of a defense as we can have. Uh, naturally, Joe Pepitone and Wright is not great. Um, Jose Cruz committed an error. We had four errors in yesterday's game, despite being incredibly superior defensively than the Indians, which, who had zero errors. Awesome. All right, here we go. Russ Nagelson leading it off against Dave Boswell. With the full count, Nagelson pokes it out to left center field. Caught by Cruz for out number one. Here's Jose Cardinal. You'll see that he's wearing a Cardinals uniform. Has anybody ever played for a team where they have the same name, essentially? Cardinal for the Cardinals. Fly ball to left center field. Back-to-back, -back, exact same plays. Here's Billy, and Billy Parker. Full count, wow, and there's the walk, awesome. Will Parker be running? He does not have a stolen base this year. And he was below 50% uh, in uh, caught stealing percentage last year. So I can't imagine he's gonna go against the, one of the better defensive catchers. Does he need to with Norm Cash at the plate? Cash popping it up. In between short and third, one of those guys made the play. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at our lineup for today. Batting leadoff at second base is Tito Fuentes. Batting second in left field is Jose Cruz. Batting third at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting cleanup in right field is Joe Pepitone. Batting fifth in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting sixth at third base is Aurelio Rodriguez. Batting seventh in catching is Clay Dalrymple. Batting eighth at shortstop is Mark Belanger. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Dave Boswell. Okay, Sonny Siebert making his fifth start of the year, two and one with a 2-10 ERA. 17 strikeouts in 30 innings pitched. Opponents are only batting 168 against him. He does have a complete game this year. Barely has a fastball. Topping out at 87 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 40%. 
that's a, well, I guess a four seamer is technically a fastball. Um, a curveball rated 84. That's his best pitch. Overall rated a 78. The 34 year old righty is a free agent at the end of the 73 season. And take a look at his previous starts. He won the first two of the season. And then he lost to Baltimore at a no decision, although he pitched well, giving up three hits and in seven innings against Minnesota. You might have seen on the title card that it sh said that Sonny Siebert was the last American League pitcher with two home runs in a game before Shohei Otani did it with the Angels. And also, he threw a no-hitter uh, back in his Washington Senators days. Uh, it would have been a perfect game, except he walked one batter, Dick Nen, and uh, it was still a no-hitter. So, Take a look at the defense. I mean, in theory, it's terrible, but they don't make errors. Only we do. Here we go. Tito Fuentes leading it off with a comebacker to Siebert. One out. Next man up is Jose Cruz. He takes ball four. Suarez may be the only American League catcher with a better arm than Dalrymple. No, Dalrymple's a 95. So he is way better. Okay, so Cruz is on first base. Darren Johnson will let him swing away. Oh, he lines it to right. Base hit. Cruz going to third. First and third with one out. Joe Pepitone, I believe, is leading the team in RBI. We're going to go on contact. Hopefully stay out of the double play. A base hit the left field. We don't have to worry about it. Cruz scores. Johnson goes to second. And it's 1-0 Seattle. Good start to the ball game. One out for Tommy Ag. 2-1 count. There's a ground ball to short. And Ag beats out the double play. Just for a moment, I thought that seems like the exact kind of thing that would happen to us. Hitting into a double play with a terrible infield. But Ag's hustle. Stays out of the double play. First and third for Aurelio. And Rodriguez hits a ground ball to second. And that will do it. So the Pilots get on the board. Thanks to the Pepitone RBI. We go to the top of the second. John Lowenstein leading off. And a walk. So again, no walks. Two, uh, I'm sorry, no strikeouts. Two walks. I don't know what the hell is wrong with this game. There's a ground ball to third from Camilli. We also cannot turn the double play. Runner in scoring position for Ken Suarez. Suarez betting 308. There's a routine ground ball to second. Lowenstein, Lowenstein. I never know what it is, and I can never remember what I just said. <laughs> I think it's Lowenstein. I'm sure it is. Lowenstein's on third. Okay, here is Versales. I feel like we should almost intentionally walk him to get to the pitcher. Versales struggling a little bit, batting 261 with one home run and a walk. So it was going to happen anyway. Three walks. He hasn't given up a hit. Will Sonny Siebert hit a double? That's the only thing we have to question. A comebacker to the pitcher. And we get out of it. Fantastic. We go to the bottom of the second. Here's Clay Dalrymple. He's looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 9 this year. Make it 0 for 10 as he flies out to right center field. Mark Belanger feels like he doesn't have a hit this year, but he's batting 172. He's got a couple of doubles. I should stop bagging on him. Ground ball to third, and our pitcher strikes out. Great. We go to the top of the third. And it's the top of the lineup with Russ Nagelson leading off. 0-2 count. Hey, there's our first strikeout. I guess that's something. Cardinal with a fly ball to center. And Miller. You know, there is on um, Amazon... 
uh, uh, Prime, you can watch the uh, documentary for uh, Caddyshack. It's fantastic. It's like two hours, and it's just the funniest shit you've ever seen. And, uh, you know, well, I always say Bel Air because, you know, it's from Caddyshack, uh, Judge Smale. And uh, I, I, I just think it's like probably my top five favorite movie of all time. I laugh every single time. We go to the top of the above the third, and it's Tito Fuentes leading off. It's nice to get a one, two, three inning for Boswell. Fuentes hits a ground ball, snagged by the second baseman. Parker making the play, one out. Jose Cruz. He goes Apple Taco. Over the left field fence in Brainiac Stadium. 362 feet. That is Cruz's team leading third home run. Tied with Rich Rall. 2 0 Seattle. And Darren Johnson, a much needed base hit in the center field. Johnson is really fighting for his job at this point. We know we have that first baseman, uh, Rose Skidmore in AAA, who's got a 94 power. And if we're going to struggle, I want to struggle with home runs going out by the droves, you know. Joe Pepitone grounds into a double play. That'll end the inning. Norm Cash hits the seventh home run to lead off the fourth. Two to one, Seattle. John Lowenstein popping it up. One out. Here's Lou Camilli. All right. Now it doesn't really much matter, does it? We've already ruined the game. He's giving up home runs. He's walking batters. Pitchers are getting hits. Oh, no, it's going to be called. All tied at two. A couple of solo shots. Tom Yeji of a leadoff single. 30% chance, which is like negative 50%. So, no. Uh, we will hit and run with Aurelio. Ground ball to first. That will get AG over. In scoring position for Clay Dalrymple. He is due for a hit. 2-1. And a base hit. Of course. AG scores. It is 3-2. We get the lead right back. Mark Belanger. Fly ball to center. Cardinal making the catch. And Dave Boswell. Against Seabird, he's 0 for 4 with 4 strikeouts. I mean, that is what a pitcher should do every time he comes up in this game. There we go. 0 for 5. Wish granted. We go to the top of the 5th. Pilots get the lead back. Here is Russ Nagelson. Striking out. Okay, so Boswell's back to 3-3 three and three for the walk to strikeout. So he's due to walk somebody now. It'll be Cardinal. No. Cardinal flying out to the left. And Billy going for this, his second 1 2 3 inning of the game. Yeah. Game tied at three. Tito Fuentes leading off with a base hit. Gets past the left fielder for a double. Fuentes had a double and a triple yesterday. Still, maybe not our best hitter, but our most consistent hitter. I mean, look at all these hits. He had three hits yesterday. There's that double triple. All right, Jose Cruz. Let's get a base hit. Knock him in. One, two. Oh, a blooper. That might get down. Get down. Yeah, base hit. Look at the lead right back. Well, this is an entertaining game, if completely unrealistic. Cruz with the RBI. 
Darren Johnson with a grounding into double play. Nope, strikeout. Oh, it's ball four. Okay, Johnson finding ways to get on today. He's got a hit and a walk. Joey Pep has grounded into eight double plays in 19 games. Will this be number nine? Nope, he strikes out. He only cost us one out. Tommy AG, 01. Gets hit right in the hip. The bases are juiced for Aurelio Rodriguez. God, I know this is cheap, but I'm going to have him bunt for a hit. This usually works. We have good speed at third. Dropping it like it's hot. Oh, it pops it up. Uh, it, you can't you can't even cheat the game. It'll cheat you, but you can't cheat it. Yeah. Pound in the dirt. Oh, that could be an error. Honored runs. Oh no, we can't even get the error. <laughs> oh man. I think we lost the game right there. If we were gonna win, we would have came through. Alright, well, it's only 77 pitches for Boswell. And technically he has the lead. Who hasn't hit a home run yet? Three, four, and six. So Lowenstein. Lowenstein. God, bless it. Striking out. It's actually, I'm not in my head about it. I know it's Lowenstein. All right, Suarez. Due for the home run right now. Oh, there's the walk. Versalles, 1-1. One, one. He pops it up. Oh, is this going to be an error? Nope. All right. We keep him off the board. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Up a run. There's Mark Belanger. Striking out. Okay, Boswell. He gave us six innings. And he's leaving with the lead. I really don't know what else he could ask for. Van Kelly. Pinch hitting. I mean, he's 3 for 18. 18 at-bats in 18 games. Has the guy even made a start? Yeah, he had one start April 11th. Here we go. 2-1. And a base hit, maybe more. A double to lead off. Well, no, I'm sorry, there's one out. A double for Kelly. That is his second double. He's got four hits, and three of them are extra bases. We really need an insurance run. Let's see if Tito Fuentes will come through. Fuentes, one for three. A comebacker, go to third. Yeah. Okay, Jose Cruz, two for two, home run and a walk. And now a strike. Oh, blooper, will that follow? All right. Well, there was effort made. Seventh inning. We got to bring in the gerb. It's Ron Herbal, the gerbil, coming in. He just got injured for two weeks with a foot stress fracture. He has not particularly pitched great. He's walked three batters, only given up a hit. What is his rating? Oh, 76. Okay. That's reasonable. And a pinch hitter. It is Cap Peterson. No longer in baseball, but getting a pinch hit opportunity. And he walks. Great. All right, let's just get it over with. Magelson with a tapper back to the pitcher. Throw it away. Yep. I, I, it's 100% guaranteed. There's nothing we can do to stop it when it gets like this. So we just push the button. There it is. The game is tied. And here's the lead. And... Whatever your name is. Okay. 
So that's the end of the game. Uh, Chuck McAmel is coming in. Striking out a guy. Down ball for a guy. Again, we have five errors in two games. They have none. And it just makes no sense. Leave Herbal in there. He's already given up runs, so he's not going to give up anymore now. One earned run, by the way. Of course. A really old gap in it. A double. His third double of the year. Where did that power go? Okay, the rimp walks. We're going to pinch run the rimp. Bring in Jerry Devannon. Mark Belanger will sack bunt. This game was over when we did not get that sack bunt down. We, that was a guaranteed loss at that point. Belanger with the bunt. Everybody gets over. We'll take out the gerbil and bring in Rich Rall. They're going to keep the infield in, as they should. We'll request a sack fly, but uh, this will either be a ground ball back to one of the infielders or a strikeout. Okay. They walk him. That's not good, because they're bringing in the closer, Horacio Pina. Has not given up a run this year. Talk about a guy that's due to cough it up. Bases are juiced. Tito Fuentes can be the big hero to the kids. 2-1. Run scores on the ground ball to third. Game is tied. The gerb is off the hook. Cruz walks. That was intentional, was it not? It was. So they walk Cruz to get to Darren Johnson. How many grand salamis does he have in his career? None. Well, that's bad. He's 0 for 4 against Pena. 0 1. Weak sauce. All right. You got to fix the D. Sanguian will come in to catch. And we got to fix the P. This is the ninth inning. We'll bring in Granger. Granger's been good. I mean, he's given up one run. He's had a decision every time out. Four saves and a win in five games. Here we go. Dave Nelson pinch hitting. There's Dave Nelson if you need him. Good speed. If he gets on, he's going to go against Sanguian. Nelson with a line drive to center. AG making the catch. Here's Nagelson, who's been quiet today. 0 for 4, two strikeouts. Make it 3. Granger, that was a good trade. Here's Jose Cardinal. He's hitless. And that's the ball game. Error. Another error. Seven, I'm sorry, six errors by our team. None by their team in two games. How many under runs are they going to score? Six. 
seven errors. So we've lost three in a row. No team other than Oakland is above 500 in our division. Headline news. Oakland expands the lead with a 5-1 to one win. Indians win. Transactions, nothing. Okay. Pull up the box score. Take a look at this. I mean, that was our one chance to win a ball game with our ace out there. Uh, unfortunately, we had to have three more errors. I don't even know what to say anymore. Uh, they had four home runs. We had four extra base hits. Jose Cruz is the player of the game. Wayne Granger does factor in the decision, as I might have expected. He gets the loss this time. So a win, a loss, and four saves. Nobody could get the job done today. Horacio Pena gets the win. He's 3-0. Mike Paul gets the save. His first. And that will do it. We're going to come back tomorrow, play the third and final game of the series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.